Now, having expandable storage is critically important for all of us. Uh, let's face it, if you have an iPhone, a iPad, if you have a Android phone, an Android tablet, if you have a MacBook Pro, if you have a Windows laptop, you may find yourself running out of space. And let's face it, buying your laptop with the highest amount of memory is expensive. So having a solution that's going to allow you to expand and store files separately is critical, but it's also important that it be easy. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at this solution from a Casus. This is a TBU 405 Plus, and I know that sounds super technical, but let me tell you what this is. It's an SSD enclosure as well. So what you're going to be able to do with this little guy here is you're going to be able to connect this to any of those devices that we just mentioned. Uh, all your electronics, and you, what you're gonna be able to do is store data, move your pictures, your laptop information, all on this little guy because you can install a solid state drive inside all the way up to eight terabytes, and that's a lot. So let's take a closer look at this and why you'll wanna consider this for any device, from phone to laptop to tablet to desktop, if you're really curious about expanding. Oh, and by the way, on this side, let's flip this guy around. It has dual display port capability as well. 8K capabilities. You heard that right. Let's check it out. Now let's cover some of the specs and then we'll go into the details of this guy here. Uh, first, of all, first of all, 40 gigabit M.2 NVMe capabilities. So these are uh, little stick SSDs that you can connect into this unit and have super fast performance. It has also a built-in cooling fan so that as you're using it and you have it connected to any of these devices, it will keep the device cool. And let's face it, one of the biggest enemies of performance and solid state drives, I would say longevity, is heat. So having cooling is super important and it's also going to keep this drive going super fast. Now, you do have the ability to support multiple types of storage solutions. We talked about MVME. Well, the M.2, there's different types. You can get a 2280M, you can get a B&M, or you can have an M key. All of these are different types of storage solutions that this little guy is going to be able to support. Most common, NVMe. All these you can purchase online. Now, in addition to having storage capabilities, which up to 8 terabytes is pretty incredible, you also then have two display ports. Uh, one display port alone is going to give you up to 8K resolution. So what that means is that if you connect, for example, your laptop, tablet, or smartphone to this device, and it supports USB-C video out, what's going to happen is if you can connect this to two monitors and you're going to see this working, you'll be able to get two displays out of this, two 4K 60s, or one 8K. That's pretty spectacular as well. Now, in addition to that, you do have USB 4.0. You actually have two USB 3.1, 10 gigabit speeds, one USB-C at 10 gigabit speed. And then again, you can connect this to a variety of devices, including desktops, mobile devices, iOS, Android, and Linux as well. So a lot of flexibility. So let's take a closer look at it. We'll see it up close and you'll see why I'm excited about this because it really expands all of those products that you have. And let's face it, sometimes your challenge, you're looking at how large of a capacity should I get for my phone, tablet, desktop, or other device, this makes it really error-free. Now in the box, you're gonna have the actual solution, what you see right here. And just to give you a sense of the size, I'm gonna just put my palm on top of it. Disappeared, right? Flip it over. And if we were to grab a phone, this is a pixel. I'm gonna grab this pixel, and I'm gonna put it right on top of it. If I flip it over so you can see the thickness, it is a little bit thicker because again, this runs video and it's also a storage drive, so it's a little bit larger. And then it also has that cooling fan that you see right there. So it's a little bit larger, obviously, than a phone, almost uh, twice the size of the phone in the thickness, but it's definitely something that is that you can keep in your backpack, you can have on your desktop. If you're gonna be using it for displaying uh, capabilities like we talked about, this is pretty small. Now, you do get a USB-C cable, right? and you can see uh, there's a Thunderbolt cable. You do have this cooling gel as well as a little, uh, I would say, holder right here for your memory card or your SSD. And let me show you how this thing works for a second. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pop this open. Pop it open for you. Okay. 
Now, let me show you what this looks like. Open. All right. And you notice here that you have some contact points that contact with this right here. And then this is an NVMe. So if you've never seen this before, this is what it would look like right here. And it snaps into place. There's no screws, no tools whatsoever, which is something that I really like as well. So you don't have to take out a screwdriver to do this. It has this little plug pin that just plugs in place. It's a little uh, rubber kind of like um, stopper. And this is where your memory card would go or your SSD card actually. Now, these you can get in variety of capacities and sizes all the way up to eight terabytes, right? And then once you have it uh, put in place, all you do is you close it like this and that's it. Now it's locked into place and we're good to go. You can now use this and access the storage space on this on a variety of devices. Now, a couple of things you have going on. We talked about this USB ports, right? So if you have this connected to your phone, tablet, laptop, whatever device is, you basically can connect other devices to it and actually gain access to the solid state drive that's inside that you just saw. Over here, you have, again, a Type-C connector. And then over here, you have two display ports, two display ports using one, you're going to get that 8K, both of them connected to two monitors, you're going to get 4K60. You're going to see that. It does really well. Over here, you have... Again, power that goes in, and then this is your 40 gigabit connection. And what I typically do is this cable, I have it connected here, connected to, again, my phone, laptop, tablet, any of those devices. And then this, I would connect power because I want to make sure that I'm powering this. Um, and what you'll see here is this fan that you see rotating here will basically rotate. Pretty straightforward device. So let's go ahead and see it in action. All right, guys, so we have a lot going on here. Let me just show you my setup because this is going to show you how powerful this little unit is. So I'm going to go ahead and pan up for a second, and you can see that I am running not one, but two monitors, right? Uh, the one on the bottom is a ultra wide, like super ultra wide, and you can see how well that's displaying. And then the one on the top is a, I believe it's a 37 inch LG, right? Pretty crazy, my setup. And as I scroll down here, what you'll see is I have a mini PC and then connected to the mini PC right there, I have our, again, our Casus SSD video powering this entire setup. Now, the way things are going is I have this guy right here connected to this mini PC. Uh, video is coming out of this. I have also my keyboard is connected to it because I just don't have enough ports on the mini PC that are USB-C based. So you see two cables, one coming from the cases coming into the mini PC here. And then you see here, you see the cable going into the keyboard. The mouse is connected to the mini PC. And then I have video uh, for display port one and two coming out for both of these monitors that you see here. So this thing it looks great. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is I've created two drives or two folders. One of them is resident on that mini PC, and that's a solid state drive, and that's this drive right here. And I have a series of video drives. A lot of what I do is video, so that's kind of like what this test is going to be, and we'll make sure that that's right there in focus. The one thing that you're going to see about this is that I have different size files, just so we can see the overall performance. I have one, uh, I have two, all the way up to, I think, uh, six... Yeah, so they're all way, they're really, really large files because I just wanted to pit, push and see how, how, you know, what was the speed of this thing going to be as I'm moving files across? Because this is going to be the important thing for me. So I do a lot of video editing um, on the go. I also do video editing on my MacBook and also on my iPad Pro. And I want to be able to move files back and forth. And I also want to be able to run files directly from uh, the Acasis, and I want to see how this is going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of the files, and you're going to see one of them right here. And I'm going to grab this guy right here. Uh, this is a video file. It is right now several gigabits. Uh, how many gigabytes is this? this? Is probably about yeah, it's pretty big too. So we'll do a properties here so you guys can see that, and we'll do a properties. So yeah, three gigabytes in size. So we're going to try to bring this one over. Maybe that may be a little bit too too much for the first, but we're going to try this. And I'm going to drag it over here and just going to see how it performs. All right, so we'll get all the details. And you can see this is seconds. Woohoo! This is fast. This is seconds. 
very nice. Coming across. And keep in mind that your solid state or your NVMe is also going to drive the performance of how fast this comes over. But again, this file was a 3.97 gigabyte file. That was a big boy. Let's go ahead and pull another one. I'm going to grab this other one right here. This is another big guy. And this one is even bigger. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. We're going to do uh, properties again. And we're going to bring this one up here so we can see. And yeah, this is a little bit over six. Right. This is this is. Yeah, I know you're going to say that this is overkill, but we're going to go ahead and do it. We're going to go ahead and bring it over and we're going to see how well it does. And again, it says it's going to take about three minutes and it'll probably it'll speed up. You'll see this with drives typically. So it's going to go ahead and speed up. But this is this is a significantly large file, right? This is the type of video editing that we're doing. So we deal with large files. We deal with large audio files. And right now it's saying that to transfer a six gigabyte file, you're looking at two minutes and 45 seconds. Look at this thing just ramp up and it's just coming over across. It's like a speed demon. This I'm really happy with this performance. And I bet you that if I were to improve or let's say get an upgraded NVMe, I'd see even better space. You saw it slow down just for a little bit. It says it's going to take about 45 seconds, but it is right now looking at 1.9 1.8 gigabytes left out of the total six that we had. I think that's pretty impressive and I think it's very respectable for something this small. Keep in mind that as it's doing all these transfers that we're seeing here, plus it's running my two monitors, which are super large, it also has a cooling fan and the cooling fan is making sure that it stays nice and cool because if it gets too hot, that's when you start seeing performance degrade. That's also when you start seeing your NVMe start to fail because you have too much heat. So this thing is doing really well here and we see that only seconds left and boom, that was a over six gigabit file. All right, let's go ahead and try something smaller. Now this is a small file, relatively small compared to everything else. We're going to do a properties on this one as well and we'll take a look at this. So you guys can see this one right here is eh, 1.8. I say small because everything else has been larger. We're going to drop it over and we're going to just let it let it crunch through it. And you can see 45 seconds. It says it's what it's going to take. And again, if you're dealing with a smaller file, I'm going to grab a small file in a second just so you guys can see the difference. It should be almost instantaneously, but I'm dealing with really, really large files because that's what I work with. So, so far, this is doing really well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up one level in this directory while this is doing its thing. And I'm going to grab an installation file that I know that's on here. That's pretty small, right? So look, at this is a Chrome, Microsoft Chrome setup, or not Microsoft, so Google Chrome setup. Sorry, Google. And we're going to wait for this guy to be done. And then we're going to see what would be like a Word document, PowerPoint documents, just small documents, right? So we're just going to move over a setup and we're going to see what it's like. That was really fast given the size. Now we're going to try this one right here. And this one is just megabytes, right? So we're going to drag it over. I'm going to see what happens. And I'm going to say yes. Ha! <laughs> you saw that. That is killer fast. That's what you can expect. So, so far, really happy with the fact that, hey, I'm able to power these two type monitors, dual display, coming again from that little guy right there. And it, it's just fast. What can I say? So guys, that wraps up our review. See you in the next video.